Welcome back to Anime Savant, and uh, this week I am Senna, and if you want to know who that is, you can DM me, but I'm not going to say the name or what it's from right now, because if you Google it, you're going to see something. But I'm Senna. Ooh, that's interesting. Uh, I am uh, Shinji Ikari this week. Oh, okay. All right. And, you know, welcome back. So, which one... Do you want to start with this week? I think we might as well hit the elephant in the room, which is Sabaku Ibisco, because okay. god damn, I um, wasn't expecting... What the, what the fuck was this? I wasn't expecting that. I thought uh, if anyone was going to die, it was going to be Milo, but they literally were like, no, we're literally killing the title character. <sighs> Like in it's in one go. of the worst ways I've ever seen the character go out. Like I thought that he was gonna like destroy Kurokawa and then just like die from blood loss or some shit. Like you know, on his way out, that nigga lost the eye. That nigga he lost was fingers. Bull- oh, the book bull- uh, on his whole arm, and then died sinking into lava. He got the the fucking Terminator Two ending. Like, what the fuck? And high key, he was like, I want you to be the one to take my life. I was like, nigga, no, you're burning alive. You want the pain to stop. Like, bro. where is this coming from? Okay, so I will say that I do appreciate the, you know, I love you because some people, very ignorant people, I saw in like one of the places where the episode aired, they were like, why is he telling another guy he loves him? Oh, we're not doing that. We're not doing that. It's kind of like, bro, come on. Like, you you love your dad? We're not doing that. We're better than this. Come on. Like, y'all are so fragile. Come on. So like, yeah, he said that at the end. And now I'm just like, where the fuck are we going with this? Like, I mean, we we get, gonna get badass Milo, I guess. We're gonna get badass Milo, but then I don't know. Like the whole that's what made it hurt so much. The dynamic that they built up was so nice, and just we were we were getting to know them more, and like the Pawu and the yeah, Bisco. Like yeah. I was like, I wanted it. There's a lot. I, well, okay, so I want to give him props for killing the title character i think that's pretty ballsy also correct me if i'm wrong was the first scene in the first episode the desert when he's going into imahama or was it milo treating the people in the city do you remember what the what, who Ooh. showed up first i don't know i My, think wait was it the desert i don't uh, maybe I don't know. Oh, because that might inform who's the actual main character. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't want to. I don't want to put my stamp on that until I go and look look at it. But um, so that there's you know possibility there was some foreshadowing. There. Certainly, Milo's character got all the development in the first episode, so that part is true. So yeah. I don't mind the idea that maybe I was swerved because that's pretty cool. It's reminds me a lot of Gurren Logan. Because when you really think about it, like, well, you know who the main character is, but there's a twist for those who haven't seen the the series where, you know, a certain character dies. Yeah. Um, like halfway through the first season. And you're like, oh, oh. That was oh, not the main character. Huh. Okay, I got that backwards. So like, it's also shout out to Gurren Lagan. I just those characters that were oh, they're great. It's, the fights, just everything. Even up until the very end, I literally was just like, this shit was just entertaining. Like, yeah, all of it. But yeah, um, I, yeah, maybe we got swerved. Maybe we got swerved. Maybe. Or, and the other side of it is, so I respect the series for doing that because a lot of, there was a lot of wacky shit in this episode, but it was mostly a very grounded, heartfelt you know, it, it was all about the character relationships, the stuff with Jobby when Bisco's having that talk and, you know, they promise each other they won't die. And Jobby asks him, like, do you hate me? And he just gives him a hug. And it's yeah. like, there's a lot of there's a lot of weight on what's going on if right anyone now. If anyone was going to die, I've been waiting episode after episode for, all right, this episode, Jobby dead. All right, yeah. he dying. All right, he out of here. And but they did do in the very beginning kind of what we both talked about in by episode two, which is they talked out loud about how Bisco's relationship with Milo is basically 
mimicking Jobby's relationship with Bisco. So to have yeah. those two different um, storylines sort of side by side with each other in pretty short order. I mean, like, yeah, think about it. It's been nine, eight, nine episodes. They've established quite a lot with these characters, despite kind of how crazy the series looks on the outside, it's actually pretty compact and straightforward when it comes to these character relationships, which makes it easy to watch and very interesting. Now, they have killed him on screen. Does that mean he's actually dead? I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to say I don't know also because he kept saying something about my spirit, my spirit, my spirit. But then right. also, this is a fantastical world. So there's probably some kind of mushroom or some shit out there. So like the Tetogen, right? Like the situation of the Tetogen. We know that like whatever technology that is, clearly coming to life next episode, um, they've spent a lot of time in this episode showing us like the f the facility that Kurokawa was working on with like the lava with all the rust in it. So yeah. Bisco dies in that solution that is connected to the Tetsujin. So if it activates, you know, I'm curious. I'm not saying that like I expect maybe he'll come back to, to life, but not as a human. Exactly. I or through some other method. I don't know. There's there seems to again. There's a lot of lore underneath what's going on and we still have like three more episodes in the in the yeah. season so there's i mean th does that mean anything no i mean they can tell us the story they want to tell without um him. without him is he's not necessary and frankly none of the characters are particularly individually necessary you need probably like it felt to me in this episode you tell me if you got the felt, felt something different that they were actually building up a lot of lore um and because, I definitely yeah. got that with the Tetsujin, especially when they were like, um, uh, these are the reasons why the calamity around Japan happened. Mm -hmm. And like, we dug up and like, it has like an infinite rust generator inside right. of it. And there's a missing one. Yeah. And then you get like Kurokawa's master plan of like, um, engineering the rust storm now that they have a cure, you know, like. And also did that like rust was going away by itself. Right, exactly. And then, and then there's a vill the village and like all things that we in some part kind of knew something about, but this didn't even feel like, you know, the penultimate uh, explanation of like what's really going on. This is no. like another layer of information. So there's a lot more story here. If this is what Kurokawa is doing, then what the fuck is the actual government doing? Right, right, right. So there's, there's a lot there and I like Either either outcome. If Bisco is dead and the character's out of the story, props to them. Because I got invested in that character and they made a good good use out of him going. He went out like a boss. He went out like, you know, I'll tear you. I'll if I have even a single fingernail left, a single tooth, I will tear your throat out. And how'd he go Literally down? He turned out biting that nigga's throat. Pushing his skull into the fucking lava. Yes. Like, yes. I don't know. I don't know how much. Yeah, bite biting the neck was like, oh, but then even in the lava, I thought he was gonna drop the body in the lava and hop back up. He was like, no, bitch, you're, I'm gonna let me help you. Yeah. Shit. Like, and was it, was I mean, it, it looked it looked like lava, but lava don't act like that. So there's something weird about- Yeah, it seems um, thicker. Yeah, yeah. That, that, at the I don't rate know that they were going down. Well, maybe it was because of the rust inside of it. Like, you know, we, I, but honestly, I have faith in the show to, in some form or form fashion or format like explain that whether it have like something to do with the main story or if it's just like off the cuff like oh yeah that like rust lava because there's still going to probably be in that facility at the beginning of the next episode so. Mm -hmm. so characters who weren't in this episode really all that much Pau wasn't really in it she has a couple scenes she jellyfish is. girl was not in this episode either um and that's the weirdest part for me it's like this doesn't feel like a climax because all the characters aren't there you haven't exactly. brought everyone back around so right. something else is still going to happen. Jobby doesn't know what happened to Bisco. He's outside dealing. Oh, can we talk about the fucking animals in this episode? <laughs> so we got like... So I, the... told, I told you niggas, I told y'all they were saving the budget. They're saving it. And this was one instance. So I have full, full 
faith that these next few episodes we're gonna see shit. We're gonna see multiples of those apes. Yeah. Or we're gonna see some other wild. We saw shit. some wild shit. The most normal thing were those like hornets that showed up that were like remote control. That was the most normal thing. We we got the the Ganesha, which is the elephant gun that's gonna yes. shoot the rust, which is it looks so it's pink. It's a big pink elephant. Uh, crazy. The the commander gorilla with the fucking cigar with the, and like the boxing the gloves, and the metal fucking arms. Box gloves. so much character in that like 15 seconds we got and then immediate just like yes like oh just, my power oh man yeah it took him out same deal with like the the mushroom mutant dude where it was yes. like it was that was pure comedy it was, that was so like creepy also at the same time yes it was it was pure comedy it reminded me of indiana jones there's a scene in raiders of the lost ark where he's running around being chased by assassins and this guy pops out and he's doing all these sword moves and it looks crazy that indy just pulls out his gun and shoots him in the head and it's like because it's anticlimactic so like the guy the same thing happened here the the henchmen were like bro that thing's not finished it's a failure he's like no go get it normally when that happens it's like oh this is a crazy berserker that's gonna really put our hero to the test this motherfucker showed up started shooting missed everything which i'm which may come back the damage to that facility i thought that was gonna start a chain reaction or something maybe or and then he basically gets one shotted into the lake of rust and it's like ah it sucks to be you which so like there was so cool like i didn't even know those metal fucking mushrooms existed like it is crazy wow okay yeah 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 so there was a lot of creativity i think in the little little elements of the series. I swear, I thought that um, when he was, I thought he was gonna kill Jobby in that scene where they were up on the, you know, doing the exposition. Cause he's like, no, nah, I'm not gonna join your evil plan. And then he's like, all right, just shoot him in the head or something like that. And to, and then when um, the henchman walked up, I'm like, okay, that's not a normal was, person. I, I knew I, it. I thought it was a it jellyfish was girl at first. I'm like, oh, maybe we'll get a cameo of nah, her. No, cause she's not about risking her life like that. I know, later. right. Yeah. yeah, also she's not necessarily strong. So when he broke and she doesn't the, know Jobby, I think, does she? Ooh. Oh yes, yeah, because she she yes, was she going does. to track them down initially. Yeah. yeah, but like, but either way, when the when uh he broke the chain with a knife, I'm like, oh, that's not her, that's somebody else. Yeah. Like, it's not Pawu either, so it's probably Bisco. So I was like, all right, that's cool. So it all kind of comes together, you know, as you would expect. Um, and it was an enjoyable episode. I was just, I don't know if like shocked is the right word. I think I was kind of impressed that they went this road and maybe not another road uh because i'm like you ain't gonna give me all these fucking death flags and not pay it off like i guess he getting swerved i just i thought that he was just gonna get like addled and you know just maybe not be able to fight at full efficiency anymore and so then milo would have to step it up but said, no, the moment the moment that those fingers came off with the bow i was like oh i think this nigga's dead like, <laughs> like, like dead dead like you're with like actively, a d you're actively falling apart mid battle yeah. like i think he's dead it, i think he i think he's dead dead so that's cool i don't know them. where you go yeah i, don't yeah, know I agree kudos yeah, to them. um what are really they? missing out they been, they missing out missing out People sleeping on this series is i don't know I don't know. I don't know what what you can't you can't be a fan of this season and not at least be peripherally aware of what's going on um, in Sabaku Bisco. That's my opinion. I think it's the most interesting thing that is being produced. It's not like the greatest ever. If you have different tastes, you're gonna like other stuff. But I think it's the most interesting thing that's being um, you know animated this season. So I enjoyed this episode. I agree. Uh, so Vitas the down bad episode because that's what this was. They was just down bad. The whole time. Listen, I I really enjoy the show, but once again, the down badness lasted too long. It lasted too long. <laughs> we should have got a transition to. I I think. Well, no. Let me change that. Vanitas's down badness lasted too long, and primarily lasted too long because the comedic elements didn't really hit the same as John's element. So like John with like Luca, Luca got that history. And then with Dominique, Dominique was the one that coached her through that stupid ass date. So like mm -hmm. the, all of that comedy. Yeah, like, right. There was, there was a, a connection to something yeah. they had set up before. That, with that Bonnie is Tosh, Like running into Roland and homeboy and like telling them that stuff and then being weird about it. I'm just kind of like, um, 
I kind of don't believe this because I have a feeling that homeboy knows who the fuck you are. So like if it had broken out into a fight right there, then I would have been like, oh, okay, great. And then in the end of it, the like the, the guy did notice him and was like, that's the blue vampire guy, right? He knew. Yeah, like, yeah so, so I... Like, I don't Not... want, I don't want the next arc to start with him basically being like, you. Like, right, uh, right. That would be annoying. That would be very annoying. I think I'm stuck on the implication of season one when they met the Chussers that like they were going to be like this big antagonist faction. Yes, and, that's what it was played. And that that's they were very threatening. And we kind of went through all the stuff like going underground and figuring out, you know, oh, the, the, some of them. So like the idea that that dude's like um, secret lab was somehow under the Chasaur's mausoleum stuff made me think that there was a stronger connection between the organizations that were there. That's what I felt. And so mm. because of that, I'm like, Someone okay, there's actively some... enabling him. Ex right. Or, and that that faction was presented as being very, very virulently anti-vampire. And so Roland being the sort of tweener where he's like, maybe he likes the main cast, but is kind of what a Astolfo wound up being. Like he doesn't have like a deep hatred for all vampires. You know, I thought that was going to be a part of his character. So the bottom line is that they set up a lot of stuff in my own head. Maybe I created this headcanon watching season one. And now in season two, they've sort of, I don't want to say reduced, but they've sort of been moved over into these, like another member of the supporting cast who are kind of like, um, not obl is oblivious the right word? They're kind of like, they just go get along to get along with whatever's going on. And I, there's not as much agency. Like they're not bringing new complications into the story because of their presence. They're kind of like, oh, yeah, you know, v Vinitas is doing stuff. I believe what Roland says. So we're just going to go along with whatever, yeah. whatever's happening. And also happening. we never really saw Roland speak directly to him about them. And all of our interactions with that character so far has been him basically being like, Let's kill these niggas. Like, let's go. Right. Doesn't that seem like we're missing so in a in a show that has spent so much unnecessary time on backstory? I feel like we they cut out a lot I of. I think the... this is another anime thing because I feel like once this episode goes up and Vine Toss people see it, they're gonna be like, "Oh, well, they cut boom, 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 and boom." So you usually yeah. would know what was going on and what their relationship is but yeah like why because do they it have an this, like, casual this very casual interaction first of all is it serious shit happening am i losing my mind like is it like uh, the whole like curse thing isn't that like really bad and that they don't have time to be like meandering around paris drinking coffee and like talking about girl problems i'm not I saying i have a problem maybe, with that but... maybe it's one of those things where like they only go after the curses um, or we only see them go after the curses that are like the biggest and the, like the immediate threat. And maybe there's other curses stuff going on out there, but I, I do enjoy how, or I did enjoy how they introduced Dominique's curse or like whatever's the, going on the with her, whatever's going on with her, yeah. because it made absolutely, it made a lot of sense that when she started having negative thoughts and doubts, that that's when that shit crept the fuck up and started taking over now. I'm pretty sure we're gonna get the same regular damn thing where we're gonna see the history where Nania got to her ass mm -hmm. and all this shit like that. Also, we're gonna see, I'm more so interested in the little boy because I can't tell if that's Bonnie Toss, the other kid that got saved with Bonnie Toss or not. Oh, interesting. Like it looks like him because of the hair color, but it also could not be him. And also, the kid is going after Noe, but my first thought was he's probably going after Noe specifically to get at Vanitas. That is a that's a good observation. I I, I so I don't want to get away from the fact that like there were about one and a half minutes worth of content that advanced the core plot in this episode. And those one and a half minutes were not uninteresting. It was like the opening where you see like the dead woman and this, or what appears to be a dead woman. This and this like crazy kid, and I'm like, okay, we're we're hopping right back into the monster of the week format. All right, I like it. And then we go away and do you know the other stuff in the middle. And at the very end, Noe says, "Oh, when we left, there were a bunch of like vampire related attacks yes. and killings." And then we get the scene with Domi, which actually connected to her sort of a break somewhat of a breakdown in the middle of the episode so there was content there 
and I don't want to discount it because like I'm happy we have another story to track. And I also enjoyed the, I want to be clear. I enjoyed this episode. I did not, I didn't think it was like a bad episode or anything. Everybody was down bad. And that was the, that was the whole the theme, theme of every, and uh, it's just that there were little pieces where I just felt like, once again, I'm missing something. And it's probably, it's something that everyone inside of the story seems very well aware of and comfortable with, but as like a watcher who, who doesn't know what the fuck is going on, I'm just, a little i was a little confused and i wanted like maybe uh it would you know what would have been nice during that scene with roland if maybe they had had there be a misunderstanding about the way vanitas was acting and then like the serious shit that's happening in the city so that we could have like dropped a little bit about like okay what's the state of the world right now without getting in the way of what they wanted to do maybe honestly but I, it still would have been entertaining if there was some kind of conflict there because it would have stopped homeboy the chasseur guy from doing anything right. because it's like you're in public you're in a fucking yeah i agree cafe. yeah Olivia, yeah if like roland had been like they're trying to maintain the facade that they're drinking coffee yeah roland wants to help vitas and thinks it's fun you know his relationship problems are 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 silly Olivier or knows that he's a he's helping the vampires and is resisting the urge to just execute him on the spot. But maybe like the the silliness Banter. of the right yeah. gets him to bring his guard down so you can you know like well, it had to be a big thing little things like that at least would have kept front of mind what the actual story is because the last time we got the story it was Vitas having a crazy flashback to his past which now we've put to the side in favor of him being like extra down bad which is like cute but at also point, at this point i just let's keep going um i'm waiting for the inevitable episode where chloe and jean jacques show up at the last minute and save them there you go that's what i'm there waiting for now that's what i'm waiting for because i like that character as you know as tragic and you know melodramatic as it was i enjoyed her character i liked her comedic bits and i enjoyed her interactions with everyone else just the general interactions not the you know oh i'm the villain and like respect me just like you know this is how she treats violence this is how she treats noe this is how she treats john like it seemed as though she was going to be part of the group group at the end of that, even though she would have to disappear for a little bit. So now I'm just like, sure. all right, nigga, bring Chloe back. Like, yeah. and also there's something, there's something different because she, yeah. Is, yeah. she is someone that became a vampire. She's not someone like you mentioned earlier in earlier episodes that like, she's not one of those vampires who were like birthed. Like she is a human that turned and she's not connected to the queen. So what's going on? I'm a, like, it's I still well, I don't feel... need all the answers now. Yeah, I don't yeah that I'm... plot line compared to what we got this episode. I, I know I said I was tired of that plot line, but the Gavaldon plot line is over, but that doesn't mean that Chloe's plot line is over. Okay. Like the, the, but that's the whole thing is like when they came back, I was expecting this to be a more subdued or at least um yeah you know, a palate cleanser between whatever it is they're gonna a get to episode. so like there were a lot of times where i felt i was being entertained and laughing in ways that were earned it wasn't just like in some other episodes this season where they just throw the comedy into the middle of it and it's like i don't know if i'm feeling what's happening right now this I time that, yeah. they'd earned a lot of it like when the when luca just like he was so overwhelmed by the fact that the girl he was crushing on it's just it's over the fight is over so they they were doing the thing where he just like passed out it's got the flower on his head because his brain is just gone like yeah. i was laughing i was genuinely laughing i think like uh gene's description of like how she's come to terms with how she feels about him and it's completely flipped so now she's like oh i'm gonna i'm gonna eat him alive i'm gonna be just like my mama my oh mama my God. Grabbed, grabbed, yes! up, grabbed up my daddy that fucking line i was like oh okay yeah that was good all that stuff it, that felt earned because i knew a lot about that those characters and they had had plenty mm -hmm. of like there was a there was a trajectory for all the the storytelling cool yeah. i'm with it on the other hand the thing with Nadia seems like a big fucking deal. And it seems like something that like we just, they came home. He said he was like holed up for two weeks, not eating, 
like the whole stuff in the beginning with Orlock, which I was like, as soon as I saw that scene, I'm like, oh, this is a joke episode. We're not, we're not even going to be serious because from minute one, they're all just like in shock at how fucking stupid they are and they throw them out. The most entertaining part about that scene to me was that they prioritized the cat over Bonnie. Todd. True, they did. And they were just like, we're going to kick you out as soon as the kitty cat is finished eating. We just let you yeah. know that shit. Like <laughs> that, that was more funny to me than like watching Bonnie Tosh just like flail everywhere and act weird. Yeah, with his little like, like skeleton face. Yeah. Like, oh, I'm dead. Oh. And like, no way be a dumbass. It's to be like, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> like, okay, yeah. If that was the only time that we got that gag, it would have been great. But yeah, they, I agree. They, they pushed it. They pushed it a little too long. It was, go- it was, it was, go- it was going and it was going. Like, I will say that the idea of the, you know, his angst being that he hates anyone who would like him because he's self loathing, it didn't, didn't get to me personally, but like that's actually a phenomenon that I know. So, like, that aspect of his character is endearing and something that they should lean into as much as they can because that i think is a humanizing element of an otherwise it's a of a cartoon so that's it's good i like that um but yeah other than that literally not much happened in this episode other than we now know that domi is going to be part of the next little mini arc and maybe it's something gonna be a mini arc because this shit's over already they yeah. ain't got many more episodes they got a few episodes. This is not how I expected this, this series. Well, I, I know we're getting this is technically a core, and so there will be another. But this like, is, it's not, this is all. This is this is one of the part two things. Yeah. So yeah. This will this will be the official end of the first season. Yeah. So I I don't know how I feel about the the pacing, but whatever. I've said this like every episode, so it's kind of like beating a dead horse at this point. Yeah, I, I still... feel like I'm probably tired of that, but we because we've been saying the same thing every week. But it's not our fault because we I I feel like these problems I didn't, didn't do this in the first. <laughs> I feel like these problems didn't exist in the first part. I don't know. No, if it's, I, not it's not really, just no. me, is it? Because it's I I was enjoying like every episode of that first part, and now. It's just not the same. We're kind of at the point from the first season where all the characters, they st- kept stumbling into new situations. So we, the audience, and the characters were on the same path where we all knew the same things because we all saw and experienced things in order together. But at some point between the end of the first season and the beginning of the second season, the first three episodes of the second season, it felt like there were things that had happened to and around the characters that we never experienced. And those things were influencing what was actually going on, how they were reacting to situations, you know? And not only did we have these disjointed experiences, then all the characters themselves started having very disjointed experiences from each other to the point where we've actually time skipped three times between episode um the last episode of the first season the then there was a there was a time skip between yeah those, the in the first episode of the stuff. second season yeah then there was a a short time skip um well i won't call it time skip but like they all got caught in a time distortion. vortex distortion yeah. and then there was another time skip before this episode and the end of the last episode so in all of these different spaces things happened like chloe and john jock going off and doing what they were going to do we only find out about that through chloe telling to domi that the reason she doesn't know is because she they apparently um uh uh uh, what do you call it? A uh, uh, Vintas and Noe stayed around in Javaden after the final episode. Okay, what happened to the Count's people? What was their takeaway since G- John lo- like failed? Yeah. What about the the Chasseurs? They were fighting demons. Then the thing with the Stalfo, there was actually a whole group of them who were there. And then Roland shows up, dude, pats out. We don't know anything about. It. So these are all like events that ended the last story, but I don't, we don't know what the fuck happened well that was because part of the epilogue was spent on her sucking his blood i was definitely gonna say something else but yeah it was spent on her sucking his blood this is a fact yes i'm i'm and i mean it's not bad but also it's like if that was going to be the only episode allotted to doing the epilogue then you should have like 
moved it along a little bit so that yeah. we can start here and know like oh okay they're take care of that that's going to come back here oh this is what happened with them this is what they told the church that happened oh this is john returning right. and ruth right thing. like it would have been they didn't even they wouldn't even need that long to like develop john returning they could have done a like 10 seconds maybe like a minute of her returning and ruth and being like you know at least I told you this and you know you did this and that's okay and then him turning around and just having like a fucking scowl on his face as he walks away that's all we need to know girl you in danger right that's it. and the mysteries that we've lost track of that were all related to so so go season one ruthven what is he doing what are his motivations what's what going his, on there what are his ties to the royal family right like, all, all of these of all those questions right we we all we learned in seven episodes or eight episodes is that he knew chloe and tried to take her power and that's it okay fine that, that's as much as we get there i'm but fine leave that alone or what like well, actually, we do know because of humans and shit. right, but I but like this all, all this is this is what I what I what I'm getting at is that when you tell uh, the audience information in a flashback, it's meant to inform, you know, it's context. It's literally just pure context. So we got some of Ruth Devin's backstory, but if you recall, the last time we were actually as an audience in the now interacting with that character, he bites no, no way, way, which seems to have not come up at all in 13 because, episodes because it's an so now i think that ruthven isn't actually it's it's a power of his curse he's not actually cursing he's not giving people the curse that nania is doing it's just that that's he somehow learned how to control his curse similar to chloe and similar to jean jacques mm -hmm. so now i'm i think it's like an on-demand kind of curse that's why he's telling Noe, like, you know, listen to me, blah, 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 whenever I tell you this. And I, he probably cursed Jean, and we didn't hear exactly what he told her because they did, like, that break in that scene. Right. And then he was like, you're going to sleep for a while. Also, <laughs> we had the whole thing with Nania. It's the queen. Everybody saw this. They were all there. And we never, yeah, we need to have a discussion about that. Like, or they need to have a discussion about it. Wouldn't because... that be, like, the most important thing? coming out of that okay i'm i'm done for this oh, week yeah, i'm yeah, done yeah, for this week because we're yeah. just gonna end up going in the same fucking circles i'm gonna give bonnie toss the minimum until the very end of the season from now on okay um, I'm, I'm like i'm still gonna watch it but like i'm not gonna bring up these same things because they might surprise me we might get everything that we need True. and want to need and it might be done very well just like you know they were saving it for like you know fast paced final episodes or some shit like that so i'm yes. saving in my opinions yes. in the yes. in the event yes. that i am yes. wrong yes but if i'm not wrong i'm gonna go i'm gonna let it rip on that for after that last episode so yeah so so i'm so i'm here now for the other stuff that we watched this week um for me it was dress up darling which is just good uh, yeah niggas good. gonna be mad as usual that you know things were <laughs> things were seen and daily views with chocolate it's too, it's too <laughs> sexy it's all it's all too sexy for whatever moving on um i also watched uh genius prince which was an interesting episode because it basically they took it was all about the side characters doing their doing their thing on their own oh, um wayne okay. was barely in the episode he was there in in like one scene in the beginning and then it's all about his uh sister um lowell mina shows back up again uh and then not nine and and it's basically all the women were off doing something you know to advance the plot together yeah. and it was a, it was a it was a good episode and i was you know but it it did a thing where it flew again a little too close to the sun and then backed off so the the, the concept of the episode was lowell mina has has managed to more or less diffuse the armed conflict that was coming in the oh, empire based between off her of what he did yeah between her three brothers and the way she does it is oh. by setting herself up as like the peacemaker where she hosts a summit or is hosting a summit in a neutral territory to get the three princes to 
come to a peaceful resolution, thereby making her look like she is the best because she was the one who was able to sort out all this stuff. Now, she, her problem is that in the time since she showed up at, in uh, Natra and th this point, uh, she has gotten more power inside the empire, but she doesn't have anyone of any notoriety supporting her. And so her gambit is to get Wayne and his kingdom to appear beside her as if they are her benefactors in order to give her leverage over her brothers wayne being wayne doesn't want anything to do with this yeah and so, and so swerves her by instead of sending himself he winds up uh getting his younger younger sister to volunteer to be the representative of the country on their behalf which bolmina doesn't realize so there's a comedy scene where she's like rehearsing what she's gonna say to wayne and the doors open and it's his little sister instead so then we get like an interesting episode where the so the the place that they are having the meeting is actually sort of like a fact somewhere it's like across between rome and like switzerland it's this neutral merchant maybe yeah okay. it's like a neutral merchant territory where they practice a form of democracy and so everywhere else in the in the show we've seen these very autocratic feudal societies and this is the first sort of renaissance democracy and so the younger sister what was her name Felania or Lana or something like that. Anyway, she takes a tour of the city and sees the forum where they're discussing politics and arguing politics and they're all commoners. There's no noble. So she's like fascinated by this. It's like, oh, wow, or oration and body language and all these other things are so important. I, I need to learn this because if I'm going to be a good representative of my brother, I can't get tricked or trapped by these other nobles, mostly men who are aggressive and will take advantage of me. Also, she's like, Lowell Mina is also trying to take advantage of me. So either way, I got to figure oh, out. Oh, at least she knows that. She's not a fucking dummy, right? Because it's funny. Her character is like, she thinks her brother is awesome, but she only sees the exterior. So she believes in all his 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 bullshit so whereas he is an actual genius trying to like get away with slacking long enough to get out of the situation but winds up looking like a hero she looks at him like oh he is a genius prince i need to be like my genius prince brother and they mentioned a couple times that people got the feeling talking to her that there was a lot more going on in her head than everybody you know would immediately assume so this is all well and good there's a point i want to raise just about this episode and about about japan this is a child okay it's recognized in the episode that she's like 12 she's not even 13 oh. this is the pre-pubescent child this is, she's young young so the crux of the conflict is that one of lolmina's brothers the princes is a fucking degenerate asshole who, oh, no. who who despises these provincial you know nobles i.e from you know wayne and his family and thinks that they're jumped up above their station and so does the thing this series has done from the beginning which is when a bad guy is bad they aren't just like five percent bad twenty percent bad they they're are like 99 110 percent evil so he's sitting in his room <clears throat> just getting more and more mad nobody is there he's kicking over tables like fuck this bullshit ass country sending this whack ass child to these meetings like what the fuck is this wayne sucks i hate this nigga i want him i want him to suffer i know what i'll do and he his face curls into the grinch grin or like, figure it out so his plan is to surprise wayne's sister and propose a, a royal marriage on the spot because in their country if you apparently if when a woman marries a man they become their property that's the oh, quote no. <clears throat> that was there and so he's thinking that like because he's a prince there's no way of the empire there's no way that like this He'll little no. girl could possibly say no and then once <clears throat> once she agrees he would torment her and abuse her and there'd be nothing that anyone could do to stop him and like it was it was it wasn't out of nowhere because he showed up an asshole but like that scheme is not where i thought that this episode was going it's just, oh to abuse a child that was his plan was to the surprise wedding to abuse a child <clears throat> so i'm just like what are we doing what are we doing right now what what's going on to the show's credit i guess 
And so, you know, she uses her diplomacy and actually leverages the fact that she's a child. She's like, I'm a, I'm a minor. I can't be making these big state level decisions oh, wow. <clears throat> on my own. You know, because world marriages are matters of state. They're politics. They're not about feelings. No love. And so, yeah. so I have to defer to the, you know, my family who's in charge of the state. I'm just here as a representative. And like, you know, she has a, a couple, a gambit within that. And it seems to get the better of him. But at the end of the day, he tries to do the whole might makes right thing. And then that's when Wayne shows up in the nick of time at the end of the episode to tease that now he's going to put this guy in his place. Oh, my for real. God. He can't kill a prince. <sighs> like, it's going to. Oh, my he's God. Killed, he's killed a lot of people so far. Oh, my God. He can't kill a fucking prince. This time, I don't think fire. he could kill. But but that's the point. The point was that, like, they the, the concept of, you know, um, of proposing marriage to a minor in order to abuse her is not where I would have taken the dastardly plan. Are we redo? Because like, that sounds uh, like very uh, redo-ish. Not where I would have taken that plan, like, but they also got out of it, you know? Yeah. So that was um interesting. So they're, they're trying me, but for now we've escaped, you know, the, the black hole of, of horrible of bullshit um yeah other than that not much else what'd you watch i watched beyblade <laughs> fucking beyblade um burst <clears throat> burst brawl and some of the original and and then i also watched some like beyblade like youtube videos and it's just so not the not the anime show itself but like i watched some of the most recent beyblade animes and what you said was exactly correct that it is that is that has nothing for me absolutely nothing for me <clears throat> but as i watched some of the older ones i had a bit of nostalgia creep back up where i was like yeah i used to watch this shit every day before school <laughs> like, i used to see that nigga get those like that different kind of metal or like an arm right, dragon right. Evolve and shit like that like i remember that and then i was like okay well let me see what the real life like shit looks like on youtube and honestly it's pretty much exactly the same, but it's still entertaining somehow to just watch that shit. Just makes me be like, all right, like what's gonna happen? The shit's be like breaking apart in the fucking like battlefield and shit. I'm like, okay, I get it. I can see a tons of kids being interested in this, like a shit ton. Of it's kids. so easy. Like, it, yeah, like, I 100% agree. Yeah, but like, and that just makes it even more so apparent that like I am not your target target audience. But I know that that audience is out there and they're into this shit. Right, so, right. So yeah, I watched some Beyblade anime. And, you know, it was what it was. You know, I, you know, <laughs> put a little six or so hours into that, and I was like, okay, I get it. Like this is just yeah, yeah. It's, it's okay, it's whatever. Um, Can we get Metabots back? Can we do that? I, I thought there were rumors of Metabots coming back. That's what I remember hearing. Like that was it last year? I think we talked. Yeah, about it was it. last year. Yeah, bring it back. I'll watch Metabots. I'm, I was and all about so Metabots. many like a dodges to it, and it's been like a guest, like um, uh, guest characters and so many gotchas. I'm just like, you might as well just bring the shit back. Come on, because the people who watch Metabots got the money to spend money on gotchas. So That's what I'm saying, I'm not asking for too much. Back. I'm not asking for too much. Just give, give me a little, uh, give me some Metabots. Um, yeah. What um, else? Anything else? I anime wise, no, not this. Not this week, but I also have like a different schedule for things set up for this week. So I will have newer things that's not airing this season. Actually, you know what? I did watch some more Kaguya-sama, Love is War. I'm almost done with the first season. And I just got to say that like that first, the first episode of that series does not do it justice. And uh, it gets better every fucking episode. And for it to be a comedic romance show, it does not have like the Konosuba comedy that like everyone loves so much. Like it's a different brand of comedy that fucking works. It's just like the, the way that they do like simple misunderstandings, like one, one skit, it's like an ongoing skit where the president and the vice president, the two main characters, mm -hmm. they keep giving this couple advice and it's always the wrong fucking advice, but somehow the couple is still together. And like, it's just, it just builds and builds and builds and shit like that. So it's cute. 
Um, and it's fucking hilarious. Like a, a fucking like hikikomori meet, like as part of the student council. And it's ever since he's been introduced, that nigga's been down bad. All he's been doing is making the worst. Fucking <laughs> so, like it's just so fucking entertaining. Uh... It's so entertaining. Like. At one point, the they like stole his PSP and like Nintendo Switch and like locked it in the box to like threaten him. Like I was like, okay, this is I just that that's how you get someone's like that attention. I'm sorry, it just is. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been a really good fucking ride. So I'm I'm trying to catch up, um, watching it and also doing the reactions for it before the third season drops in shit three. I feel like March is moving kind of fast like what the fuck it's fucking weird we're already yeah. a week into march yeah like it's gonna I be the February double was gonna digits. Last forever and now it's like march yeah. is, <laughs> march is on the going. double digits at the end of this week that's kind of fucking crazy that's but, pretty wild yeah i'm trying to catch up on that but that's the main thing that i'm watching right now and then i'm about to start um rascal dreams of bunny girl Senpai, bunny girl I, I watched the first two episodes of that it's a very interesting uh, show. I heard someone told me that like the beginning doesn't make sense and it's not supposed to make sense. Until, the first episode like, definitely does not, but the second yeah. the second starts to get to it. Yeah, and yeah. it also has a movie too, so I'm interested to still see where all that stuff goes. But yeah, that's that's a lot of what I watched recently. Yeah, I I didn't watch any of the like full episodes of anything, but I did go down a rabbit hole of um Cromarty High School clips on YouTube, and oh. I, they're all out of context obviously since like i'm not watching the season but like i did i did watch it at one point and it's just it's such a weird experience because it is very funny but it's a type of comedy like absurdist comedy i guess what's that other what's that one the the show that uh that was airing maybe two or three seasons ago the site was it psyche k the one where it's like the guy oh is yeah it, the one that's on netflix yeah they yeah advertise like it, on netflix all the time it has the same vibe but it's so it, i don't even know what to call this like it almost feels like i'm watching sketch comedy that got woven into like episodes um oh, okay. and it's just a kind of humor that isn't done as much anymore and i think a lot of it's because like konosuba was so popular that the types of comedy anime that get made kind of adhere more to the that yeah. format of comedy yeah i i was watching like i miss this but it's also old as fuck like that shit came out in, like oh three so we're talking like almost 20 years old at this point Shit! oh my goodness oh old. old oh my god i remember 2003 some of y'all weren't even born hey oh, i definitely wow. remember 2003 wait no that's not true because based off the statistics a lot of y'all that be reading and watching y'all were born y'all like y'all are right around our shit yeah, you like, knew what was going on yeah, you know oh three i was still in high school but man it was it was an interesting time i didn't even hit high school yet oh my god yeah i was um, i was in high school but it was an interesting time um but yeah so that's a pretty much all i watched uh do you know anything about this genshin impact anime what there's something they're producing something no 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 no. what because i keep seeing like uh i don't know like clips here and there people saying it's, it's a there's a no. genshin impact anime what what oh uh, i mean there's a rumor. i see february 3rd there's a rumor that it's in the works but i haven't seen any official now if there were an announcement an official announcement of that from mihoyo Mm -hmm. It would take it would take over Twitter, like okay, it would take over I, all parts of Twitter. I, I that's what I was feeling. I thought I was going crazy. I'm like, what is this? Like, no. I feel like I would have heard about. And it I would have said something about officially. it. Yeah, well, yeah. I would have said something about it during news, especially. Because, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, no, there's nothing going on. There's, I mean, there's a, a there are new characters. There's always new characters. There's a, there's a new um character who's like the head of his household who, you know, does all the politics in the Japanese focus company, uh, company, country that's out right now, get Inazuma. And um, he pulls Boba out of his like arm sleeve. All right, so let's go to news. Where is my news? Okay, so first and foremost, have you seen the um, the new Jujutsu, Jujutsu Kaisen stuff? Yes, the, indeed. Um, not the... Not the movie stuff, but the the mobile game opening. 
listen. Yes, indeed. They're gonna they're gonna make so much money. They're gonna it'd be they're so gonna many make, fucking money. They're gonna make so much fucking money. They literally they were like, "Yo, Mappa, come back through real quick." And then the opening song is good too. And then the fucking action sequence with the new characters being animated yes, too. Yes, like, yes. I'm sorry. Like it's. I'm gonna- you know the fucked up part that it this is gonna be so simple to to make it just turn it into a, a gold mine. You have whatever your silly game structure is gonna be. You have cursed weapons and tools, so there's all your items. The way that they make money, if I'm correct, if they do now, if they do do this, I'm gonna hate them for this. I mean, you know, you, you I defer to you. You're the master of all this. Well, stuff. so some 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 gotcha games, you only roll for the characters. Right. In other gotcha games, you roll for the characters and the weapons. I mean. Bitch asses. Um, But (laughs) so in those kind of games, it's harder to, to, you know, be meta and like do all the strongest shit because you don't only, you can't just get the character and be strong. You have to get the character. Right. And you have to get the perfect weapon for them. Come on, come on. It's too, it's too much, too easy. It's too easy, so, and they have like, they can have all these all the alternate art for all these different characters. Like, come on, uh, the, the oh my god, the, they're gonna have Christmas outfits. I don't want to give versions, away Easter anything, versions, but like a very significant character change occurs for a fan favorite, and you know that there's going to be the base version that everybody knows from season one. Oh, yeah. And then the other version that everyone's going to want because it's fucking badass. I can tell you what's going to be the first banner. The first banner is going to be Yuji with that fucking dagger. That's there you the, go. And sure. then the next banner is going to be him without the dagger. Going, like, Just I can already the money, see it. Print it's the like money. boom, boom, bam, bam, bam. Just it's already it there. Yep, I agree. The, and then no there's going to be... Gojo, I don't know anything about Gojo. Young, beyond. the young version. See, right? exactly. I don't know anything about it. All I know is that they're gonna have Gojo with the eye patch as oh, one. Come on now. And then they're gonna have now. him with both eyes. Come on and now. Another, it's like, so easy. They're gonna they're gonna clean the fuck up. They're gonna clean the fuck up. It's so they're gonna easy. have a different version of Nobara where she's literally gonna be in her like going out outfit and mm-hmm. then in her actual school. Like it's, they, it's I can already I'm already telling y'all the banners like just go ahead and prep like because you could I mean come on it's the fact that so many of those like easy cash grab <laughs> games like anime games they make so much fucking they money really based do. off of the IP if you look at the slime game and the my hero games the the just the excessive amount of my hero academia games they're still going because people are putting money into them regularly and they're not fun anymore it's literally just like a small group of people who are just like we're competing to brag about this yes. or like i've made my youtube channel or my brand based off of this game so i'm just right gonna, it, it's completely understandable because you know if you could if you found your niche you found your niche but what the companies are doing is still wrong it's still wrong so there are times when I feel like Japan has perfected the mechanism of mining people's wallets for the money they don't have for shit that they don't the money need. Money they don't have for pixels. And then there's other times when I feel like they're completely allergic to making money, like the right way. And it's always one or the, it's never. They're going to get the money one balance. way. Yeah, it's like it, some of this stuff is a no brainer where I'm like, come on now. Like, of course, we're going to get, you know, the Jujutsu Kaisen gotcha game that'll probably gross more than all the fucking uh, uh, volume sales in the whole country. And it, it is because that's kind of. But you know what I do hope? I hope that Gage has a, um, an actual stake in the gotcha game because then becoming a millionaire will be nothing then what's that what's that um you were telling me a while ago about a gotcha game that has like all these cameos from like different series that you were playing different anime series and uh the way it had tower of god characters i think in it like oh one... yeah i completely forgot what the name was. i haven't heard anything it's a korean based one yeah but yeah. like these types of things they make they're so like in America and in the West, we have like our own cash grab bullshit that you yeah. can see through right away. But to me, it's very inefficient. Whereas like in in the East, in China, Japan, in Korea. Hero they, Kantare. There we go. They have just perfected. Like, could you imagine having an app 
it on your phone in your pocket 24 7 that is just extracting money from you i can because when you think about when you go to like anime meetups or shit like that you just chilling with niggas and y'all talk you just shooting shit you talking about shit and you pull out your phone and you be like yo i got like this version of bam like what you got you want a pvp right yeah you can't beat me nigga like you can't beat me what you gonna do and you literally fight and then all of a sudden, either you win or you lose. And if you lose, then that, that like that little thing of just like, well, you know, nigga, if you had just like right, you know, it's so efficient. Gotten a duplicate. That's what I'm saying. It's so you would have unleashed, and would he he would have had six percent extra attack, but you it's didn't. So it's so efficient, you know, like the the process for just getting the money out of you. They figured that part out, which I'm like, great. Then I'll look at other things where there'll be these whole goddamn IPs that just sit. And they do nothing and they just sit on them and sit on them and sit on them and sit on them. One of the biggest examples of like, just like highway robbery with gotcha. And it's not because of Japan, it's because of America. The America gotcha system is completely different from Japan because Japan actually has laws about that shit. Congress is not going to know anything about gotcha until probably like 2033 or five. Like <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. so fucking behind this shit. And because it's gonna of who be like some are. scare. It would be some over some scare tactics, like some kid, like you know, some kid, his whole family. Yeah, like uh, the kid uh, used the debit bill. card as opposed to the credit card, and now sure. that family, right? Kid, yeah. Yep, it yeah. would be something dumb, and then it's like okay, now now it happens, but Let's like pay attention. there's that. So there's so there's like you know the efficient you know uh, crime of stealing money from people through gotcha. Then there's like. Fucking Konami, where they've got all these amazing IPs and all they do is make pachinko games out of them. I know it's nothing like, about the pachinko stuff, but I know that they love that shit over there. But they like, but they, but like, we, so we don't get Silent Hill. We don't get any of these like, you know, really power, strong IPs that they're just sitting on forever. And if you see something, it's just in a fucking gambling parlor and that's it. And I'm like, come on, man. There are times I do not mind money. giving my money, but that's constant money. It's stressful. It's just stressful. Anyway, I mean, look at what they did with Seven Deadly Sins. Seven Deadly Sins Japan right. gotcha is one of the best produced gotchas because it's actually jit like they give away so much stuff in that gotcha over there. When they brought it to America, almost every single thing that they gave away from free in that game, America monetized it. They monetized every single piece Whack. of it. So now I'm like, if, if they do that kind of shit with an IP as big as Seven Deadly Sins, I'm pretty sure this Jujutsu Kaisen game is going to come over here. And because it is Jujutsu Kaisen, they're going to be like, you niggas aren't getting shit for free. Right. You're not right. getting anything for free. You're paying for all of this. So it, it be what it be. I'm excited. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Um, for the gotcha game to continue because then if we get like original storylines and they do original animations for the different arcs, we're going to do not like seasons, but like some of the gotcha games that, that have the bigger IPs, um, uh, like Fate Grand Order, whenever there's a big new story arc, there's always like a sh an anime short that's always done for it. That's so cool. If we get more stuff like that, just because it's from the gotcha game, I'll take it. That's cute. Go ahead. Let's do it. But other than that, I'm just excited to, you know, see, have more Jujutsu Kaisen animation because I won't be able to watch the movie until it streams because I got a mm -hmm. reaction to it. So, wow. But. Okay. Oh, okay. We're doing news. Not, this is we a gotcha episode. We were just going in. Uh, let me run through some the, real quick. Uh, Legend of Galactic Heroes season three. I believe this is um, the, see, this season will cover what was episodes i think like 40 through 60 in the original uh, animated version they're, they're these are from books so i don't know what oh, books are the covers okay. uh but i watched the trailer and i love and everything i see i'm just a big fan of the legend of galactic hero series like i still think that both adaptations, both the one that has been most recent and the one from the uh, late 80s, early 90s, are fantastic in their own way. Like, those, the fucking first ones were bloody as fuck. Like, it's a weird really? series. Because, it, so you look at it and you think, oh, well, clearly in this series, it's going to be all spaceships shooting at each other and tactics, and da -da -da, which it is. That's what However, I assumed. 
when they do hand-to-hand combat, they are literally dressed up like knights using hammers to like bash people to death oh. in the hallways of like these shit. Like people getting poisoned to so death. So niggas ain't just pulling out like laser guns and just- I mean, like, some of them got yeah. guns, but they, but I think the, the argument is that they will, that they use a certain type of, of uh, gas to fill most of like the spaces in a ship that oh. would explode if you were to like shoot or do anything in there. So if you're boarding a ship, you're trying to capture it, not blow it up. So then they fight. It's like niggas getting mashed. Like hard body, like beaten to death, heads crushed, you know, like oh. bodies dismembered. And then like all the grand scale combat is like literally tens of thousands of people getting killed. And then there's like ground stuff. There's like politics, betrayal. There's a horrible scene where like a whole bunch of people in a city all get gassed and die. Like, like you know, blood coming out of their eyes, crazy Whoa. shit. There's like, a, there's like a religious cult that's like assassinating people on, on earth. Cause they think the earth has been destroyed, but it really hasn't. Like it's a whole, it's a whole thing. So this is actually my favorite part of the story. There's a big plot twist that happens two thirds or three quarters of the way through that made me so sad I didn't want to watch it anymore, but only because they did such a good job getting me invested in a certain character that I'm like, bro, don't do this to me. Not like this, not like this. But this is this is where the uh, my favorite part of the story. So season three is coming out, looking real good. I'm happy to see it. Um, I don't know if we talked about like the classroom of the elite stuff, but they got renewed for two extra seasons, and we I'm like, I, last week. but yeah, this we was the newest. Last week. This was the newest announcement. Yeah. Yeah, but like, but here's but once again, my question is, but why? <laughs> I like That's it. What I'm, I'm so not mad. confused about because I enjoyed it. I watched the fir- I've watched the first season like two or three times. I enjoy it. Um, but this is just so weird for one of those shows that we thought was just going to die in obscurity and anime yep. obscurity, just with just how, um, Mao Sama, like, right. so like, what's, what's going on? And maybe I have hope because this one hasn't ended. So maybe it's coming near its end and maybe, maybe they're doing like the full metal, Al- full metal alchemist, uh, um, uh, kind of thing where the end of the third season are like, as they can start to animate it again, the actual, is it a light, light novel will start coming to a close and it'll mm-hmm. both like end out simultaneously or something like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm just, I mean, I'm gonna watch it, but I'm just confused as like, where's this confidence coming from? Like, <laughs> wh- wh- why was sus- it lacking? I have suspicions and I, I will do the due diligence to look it up because it shouldn't be that hard to check. But I have a feeling that the light novels probably went off like at some point in the last couple of years. Cause like if we're getting this mm. announcement now, it means that they are done with pre-production because they normally will not announce a se- with it with rare exceptions. You're not gonna hear about a series announcement unless they're done with pre-production. Pre-production takes like anywhere from six months to if they're going super fast to like two years if they're you know dragging their feet. So that tells me that some point in like 2020, this the light novels were fucking popping off, and that they got the ball and rolling. Greenlit this shit, yeah. yeah. And and then this is the first we're hearing about it. So all I really probably have to do is go look at what were the light novel charts from like a year ago, and you know if they if it's up there, then that's the explanation. Because otherwise, I have no earthly idea how a five year old anime got you know a re that's restart so and two seasons of sequels announced. I don't know. Because it's definitely not like Shield Hero, because Shield Hero is immediately like, bitch, we're coming back. No, like, yeah, yeah. They were, they were yeah. fucking around. There was too much money in that. They were like, yeah. uh, hold on. Yeah. You're getting another season. The only thing out. I really fucked with them was the pandemic. So True, true. Yeah. Um, what? Oh, you have anything else? Um, just a Mushoku Tensei mini rant of yet again. I thought that we were on three. <laughs> That's what I believed, okay? Come oh. to find out that finishing season one, get the absolute fuck out of here with this nonsense. Yes, it's renewed for a second season, okay? It should be season four. That's what it is. They got renewed for season four. I am not. I don't buy this like multi-core, but if you're not even done in a single calendar year, you do not get to call yourself a motherfucking sequel. No, no Wait, second no, it wasn't season. a single calendar year. I think it was premiered it? in January. It premiered in January, and then the final, the and then it did it last fall. So it took a it took a one cur break. 
Okay. Wait, two, All right. Wait, two car. Spring and summer. It took a two car break. I'll allow it this time. Okay. Okay. I'll okay. allow it. Okay. Okay. But within this the same needs, calendar year, this needs to stop. Just every season of anime. If you have, if you look, if you're, if you have a break, if there's any kind of break, that's season two. I don't care if the story's not done yet. That's season two. If I go on, if I go on like like Netflix or I go on my streaming service and it says uh, such and such season one, two, and three, and then you tell me that technically what's in that second season is the end of the first season, you can fuck right off. I don't believe that. But they love doing this now, do though. They love doing. They, they do. did it with eighty six, and I I don't know. I I don't know why they've chosen to do this as opposed to just basically being like, "We'll see you when we see you." For for season two, like mm-hmm. I don't know, there has to be some kind of reason production level, or maybe it's that kind of messaging gets more people. Where I, like, I mean, like part two, part two, not season two, part two. So that means you have to come watch this because it's part of that part. This only annoys people like me, the average person. Don't give a shit about this. It's just, it's like, I don't have like a, a you know, like a, a mania about like things being well labeled and in order. It's not that big of a deal, but it to me, it's like, if you want to have your cake of just the announcement of like the next season and a season today just means 12 episodes if that if, you know like fine i don't under i basically just don't understand why we have to pretend like if i wait six what what there's other series that do this too worse where you'll wait like a year for the second core of a first season and it's yeah. like the attack on titan problems like no 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 this is an ongoing story the whole thing is an ongoing story so where you choose to put those arbitrary breaks just let Leave it me. follow chronologically yeah. That's it. That's all I, I feel want. like That's Netflix it. does that shit a lot because I think what Bleach has like twenty five seasons or some shit on Netflix. Like, oh my! God. I'm sure. Oh my god! Um, so, it is yeah. It is. So, did you? Are you caught up on Doctor Stone? Uh, I am very close. Within like you know, okay. five well, or we'll, six we'll chapters. Come, we'll we'll come back to that one. Um, that means, the fun. the trailer got dropped for the slime film. And uh, I wasn't expecting this. I thought that this was going to be a continuation. And this is an original movie. So, okay, like, sure. Mm. I'll, I'll take it. Not I'll canon, it. moving on. <laughs> yeah, well, no, because F- Fuse wrote it wrote it themselves. Oh, okay. So, All yeah, right. they, they pinned the movie. So it's an original story by the creator. So... I was gonna watch it anyway because I love me some fucking slime. I just like I can see, I can buy that. After this past season, the way that this nigga was stunting on people, like oh my god, like I'm never. Uh, going yeah, to that was a little bit. This this man was like, oh by the way, I'm just gonna mass murder all of you with all water droplets. Of, yeah, we're just like, gonna hit you with the water droplet. You're boom, dead. Boom 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 boom. You're gonna try to transform. Gonna cancel nope. that shit. Good. Let me summon some demons real quick. Can y'all just get this done for me? Thank you. Yes, Thank you. Just... Yeah. Okay. So good. So good. Um, I, honestly, one of the best like payoffs in the series for me personally, especially in an isekai. Like, come on now. It doesn't, but not compared to Mushoku Tensai. Like, I just. Oh, just, quick shout out! If you like, um, if anyone out there likes Sentai and comedy, I watched a, a teeny little bit of the Monster Development Department, um, which is Monster Development. Oh wait, is that that comedy show where like it's like yeah. the gods and they're making? Oh, so wait, it's like it's like imagine you are in a Power Rangers world, and the main characters are the the lab technician and the scientists who create the monsters that they oh. then the evil organization sends out. But the problem is that like they fucking suck. Like they have terrible ideas, but they have to sell these ideas to the committee of the bad guy of like the super villains oh to get them to God. sign off on it. And so, like, yeah, it's and, and they're underpaid, and they're like, you know, <laughs> no, I shouldn't be laughing at that. No, that's not good, yeah. <laughs> but it's very accurate. 
so uh, so it's a it it is actually funny it's funnier if like you are currently into like some of the co- the current tokusatsu stuff because so they do what's going on with this i saw something about like a futo p futo pi futo p thing coming i don't know i saw it on somebody's like random twitter it was probably ashbeard or somebody but mm-hmm. i saw something about it and i was like oh this character looks cool he was like half green and half black yep yeah but, like was this was this the one that you and actually was this the one that you guys were talking about that yeah. like, was like in the it was coming up soon? Yep. Yeah. Okay. There's a lot of cool stuff happening, but it's more like if you've watched anything from like com the uh, common rider to um, some of the just the generic like Sentai uh, uh, seasons in the last like ten years, I think you would get even more out of it because there are definitely a bunch of in jokes in the character designs themselves and they do reference stuff even though it's not direct you know of the the series they're drawing from but actually the character comedy works like it's kind of a sitcom kind of the way it's set up but like everyone involved is very serious all the character like it's a joke but like all the characters really are trying, <laughs> which is what makes it funny. So I did want to give a small shout out there. If like it, if, if you're in that narrow uh, intersection of being into anime comedy and also somewhat familiar with like tokusatsu live action stuff, this is a it's a good show. But it's very specific to that uh, that audience. Okay. Um, I have one more thing. I just have a question. Can, if someone can enlighten me. Um, so one of the upcoming animes is called Love All Play, and it's another badminton anime. So is something going on in Japan? Is badminton having like, you know, a rise in popularity um, recently? Because like these anime are popping up now. So that means like based off what you said earlier, there had to be something. Some had to happen a year or two ago. Yeah. So like, did, is there a did we miss something? light novel? Is it yeah, maybe it's a light like, novel or something? Yeah, like what's what's going on? Um, I'm just interested. I'm not saying it is like, eh, that bit, who the fuck is that bit? Because I watch the other one. Like I watch those episodes occasionally with like the yeah. office, the office like badminton players. Like, yeah. I can't get over I can't get yeah. over the setup of that story where it's like, you're whack at badminton, you can't have a job. <laughs> Literally whispered loser in that nigga. And I was like, nigga, me. you wouldn't have a job if you couldn't even do this. Okay, but <sighs> that yeah. kills me. Yeah, I, I just have a question. If anyone knows the answer to that, you know, let me let us know. Twitter, DMs, uh, Gmail, whatever. Like, it's just, I, I'm curious because this is. I don't think this might be the last one too at this rate because these are like close behind each other. So, something happened. Was there is there a rant on your soul? Is there anything in particular this week? The only thing in my heart is we already talked about it, which is these. The, the seasonal curves. labels and yeah. also these these series that are they edge into like the weird side of uh what's acceptable in anime or the culture of anime and luckily this season nothing i've been invested in has gone to live in those spaces i would argue that like um realist hero keeps swerving out of it they're like oh we're gonna be here no we're not no harem so oh, yes we are no we're not so oh, like yeah so you know I, I i i i don't know to give props for that or if it's like just just stop doing it. i don't know somebody had sent me uh some clips from worlds and harem and oh boy oh i haven't heard that name in a good minute good thing you didn't Oh. I my I'm not going to be too hard on this series no pun intended. Uh I'm not <laughs> I, I'm not going to I'm not going to shit on it too bad. I hate spineless main characters. I hate them. Ooh. And I especially hate them when the whole purpose of the series that they're in is just supposed to be some gratuitous wish fulfillment, right? Cuz I've never wished to be a spineless piece of shit. That's never been a part of my dreams of like, oh, I'd love to inhabit the body of that man who can't fuck anything, nor can he make any decisions, nor is he confident. Like I sometimes I watch a show and I imagine that like this was written for a type of individual who like is very different for me. We all enjoy the same premise, but like 
I'm I can never hidden home to somebody. Yeah, right. But I can't be that. And that's why (laughs) I wind up being unable to defend it. Like, like, I'm not some Omega Chad. Like, I get that, like, uh, people struggle with emotions, everything. But one of the reasons I wound up sort of falling off of like Platinum End wasn't because I wasn't enjoying what was going on in the story or the plot or whatever, because it's it's wild and crazy. And there's some really interesting ideas underneath, you know, the silliness. It's because the main character is just such a useless person. Like, at least, like, watching, I always wonder, like, what if you took some of these, like, really uh, self-aware and and self-possessed characters from, let's say, Sabakui Bisco. If you took a character like Bisco and put them in World uh, uh, Platinum End, I feel like that story would be fucking amazing. Right. Because you would have you would like this idea of like, oh, the main character is struggling with how fucked up everything is, is one part. But the other part of the reason he's he's struggling is because he can't make any fucking decisions. How about just having a person who's like, okay, I believe in this thing. Now I'm going to just go operate on that belief. And if it causes problems or creates challenges for me and my story, let's have this the story be about solving that, not being about like five episodes of people sitting in bedrooms staring at their hands like if i go outside it means i'm participating in what's happening Nigga, i want to participate i want to watch the motherfucking show i want i want things to happen people complain about goku's training arcs and dragon ball z at least that motherfucker went out there got his ass kicked yeah yeah so yeah it, so the, to back to worlds on harem uh was sent a clip I did not realize that they had switched protagonists. That's new to me. Oh, but well, well. Uh, yep. But you know what? Apparently the okay. new one still doesn't realize that he's just in a, an elaborate uh, arrow gay. So still dodging these women. I, Bro, the premise is that there's five like fertile men left in the world and all these hot women want to bang them. Oh, yeah, hops protagonists throughout Somehow. it? Somehow. Like... Appa- apparently so. I don't know. He's oh. he's moping around in the background because the girl he was looking for he is dead or I don't know. Something. Oh, my God. Like, okay. Just, okay. just okay. like okay. if we're we're here and I'm going to say this. Like his mother's basically do a, a video on it, I think. Or he like I, I, maybe Maybe so. This is all I'm going to say. If you introduce a show, if I ever see anything like this ever again, if the premise of the of the show is not this this nigga here is fucking everything that moves, and then the story proceeds from there, I don't want it. Take it back. Don't even bother anime. Don't spend the money because these these lip dick assholes are all over anime, and it, it has to be stopped. Like it has to be stopped. No, but you are. This is what is training a universe of men in Japan. These vegetarian men, whatever they call them. What? It, yeah, I think it was like they the call hikikomoris. them hikikomoris. The hikikomoris, but also what they call the um, in in the translated term is is like uh vegetarian men, but it's not like oh. it's not that they are vegetarian. It's that uh they are just not um aggressive or masculine dominant in the way their culture expects men to be. Yeah, but what I'm saying is that if that is having some kind of cultural problem or generating it the worst thing you can do is to show a bunch of dudes like that media like this because all it's, if they're Give afraid to talk to women of yeah, not like changing. It, yeah right it's like it, th- there's no triumph at the end of these it's just like a bunch of sad it's like i'm waiting for true love and until that happens i'm just gonna turn down all this free vagina that is not how the world works my friend it, also it is a not. person in that position wouldn't even be getting offered that's what i'm vagina. saying it's it doesn't happen imagine a bl where like all the all the men the hottest men you know in in the universe are clamoring for one dude and he's just like i don't know <laughs> I'm kind of sad. Yeah, no. But no. also in BL, it very quickly leads to rape. Well, you so. you point you point that out that they so, don't they don't yeah. waste time. Take <laughs> some advice from those series. Learn something. Rape is not okay, y'all. I'm I not saying that. No, 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 I'm no, just no. saying that I'm not saying that that's either. what it leads to in that genre. Okay. I'm not saying I'm not saying take that. I'm saying just get to the point. Or stop doing this, or change the story. Don't don't make the the setup is fucking weird. I wonder I don't what know it's like to, in Yuri. I wonder what's happening over there. I, I don't know. Wow. I don't know. The, the I've heard that 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 uh, they enjoy moving quickly. 
in those Yuri stories Alton? as well. Okay. I, that's what I've heard. I'm not, listen, I, I haven't done enough research, so don't, I'm not putting my name behind that statement, but it's ridiculous. Don't, I would just say, do not watch World's End Harem. Just go find porn. Clips. Oh, okay. Just do that. Because it, I mean, it has get... an uncensored version, doesn't it? Or no? No, but that's a weird thing. It has a, the uncensored version is still censored. And it also the censored version is so they're bad. Stealing they're stealing people's even, money. They're not even doing marquee covers of things. They're just giving you a black frame. Like they're there's nothing on screen. Yo, they're fucking getting niggas. Oh my whack. god. Oh whack. my god. Whack. Whack. You're not even whack. getting the actual porn. You're just getting. Yes. Okay. It's it's fucking wacky. So we're I'm done. I never want to see this again. I never want to see it in my mentions. This is just a disaster. Like, this is a fucking disaster. And Brick, said, it makes me have, wish about to have a defender show the fuck up. Mr. I don't need like, that. I don't no, need but, but 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 like later on and but 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 no 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 no. This you know what this show is so bad it makes me want redo of healer back. Like it's I, so bad. I gasped because I just can't do redo's level of like torture. I know. I it may it this is this is a different kind of torture. This is a, a torture of your brain where you're just like, this would why are we doing this? Nobody would this would never if you woke you woke anything like pick a nigga off the street, freeze him, bring him back in a hundred years, tell him all the men are dead and all the women want to fuck you. You think that that man's gonna be like, well. You know, that's a cool story, but there was this girl I liked in high school, yeah, and, no. she, and, and she's probably like 115 no. years old, like a desiccated corpse, but I gotta find her first before I can literally repopulate humanity. Like, no, you fuck out of here. You wouldn't have to tell that man. No. Christ. Some dirt motherfucker off the street. No, absolutely not. Which is what the main character basically is. This is not like a upper one percent or Mensa graduate here. This is a dude. <laughs> Just some guy. All right, I'm done. Wow. Um, done. Well, now that, I don't know why, but that rant brought up something in me. Oh, but, um, no. Well, no, it's not much. I mean, I'm going to try to not make it much. But basically, it's just that, you know, um, like, if you're going to wear your anime, like, shit in public and things like that, like, wear with confidence, y'all. Um, and also, stop shaming people for having the Akatsuki symbol. Like, it's cool. I, I, I've been seeing people shame him for that. And that's not cool because that's one of my favorite things. I have several Akatsuki symbols. Just because it's popular now and a lot of people are into it doesn't mean that it needs to be like, you know, shunned. That's not a good excuse. If it's a cool fucking design, it's a cool fucking design. I, I wore it to work today and I got, hey. so many, I got so many looks and I was like, yes, it is. And yes, I am. I'm wearing it with my little dress pants or whatever. And yes, I do look cute. I know I do. So like, <laughs> walking here, like just yeah, just like own that shit because I'm not gonna be afraid, uh, like ashamed of it. So it's like y'all don't don't let these people talk you out of like wearing what the fuck you want to wear. Now I'm not talking about wearing the ahegao shit. I'm not talking. It's a about little different. That. That's uh, I'm not talking about different. that. And some of y'all, y'all do be in public wearing them, and I just, you know, that's listen, they, you. they hype beasting, they hype beasting. Listen, if that's your particular brand, then you do that, you own that. I wouldn't recommend it though, because I, because the looks are completely different from what I get from what you get. Just letting you know, also, that mm -hmm. I'd be worried about the age of the characters that be on them things because you know they'd be taken, um. Anyways, yeah, I don't recommend wearing those, but you can if you want to to anime conventions because everybody there pretty much know what the fuck the deal is anyway. True, right? true. Yeah, but yeah, y'all like, yeah, whatever, fuck these niggas. Wear the anime shit. Like, put it on. Go out there, except for the Dragon Ball stuff. Okay, come on now, y'all. Like, everybody know what Dragon Ball is. Come on. And not the whole, okay, well, now I'm telling people to not wear things. Even though I have to, okay. <laughs> see, how, okay. see how quickly it turns around? Yeah, it turns so quickly. <laughs> okay, and never mind. Whatever. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, well, that's pretty much all I got. Um, the closest thing I have to a recommendation this week um, is a reminder that, folks, you can still get Osiris Wrath on Xbox. Um, it's available and it's backwards compatible. If you have the new, if you have either an Xbox One or the the newer uh, One X or anything else, like it's all it's from the 360 versions backwards compatible. I believe it's um, 
4K 60. Uh, if you get it, like I've seen some good shit and it's a great game. It's underrated. People don't really think of it or remember it that much. Yeah. Um, I've it's one of my favorite Capcom games and it's not hard to play. It's really easy. And the story is like fucking crazy. And uh, yeah, so just go pick up a Sora's Wrath if you don't have it or play it. It's just a good game. Um, I recommend Triangle Strategy. It's I'm really enjoying it. Um, I wasn't even positive I was gonna even get the game, and then all these like super positive reviews. Came oh, I'm out. getting that shit. As soon as I'm and, doing Elden Ring, oh, I'm yeah. all yeah. And someone put it perfectly. They were like, "It's like Game of Thrones SRPG." And yep. one of the main things that I was wondering, well, I was like, "Well, what about this story?" Because like that's usually what I'm here for. SRPGs, I'm here for the classes and I'm here for the story. Because mm-hmm. eventually, the gameplay has to be there, but that story has to have my ass going too. Like Final Fantasy Tactics, and a lot of people were comparing it to Final Fantasy Tactics. That's what. That's how I heard about it. Was it like, "Oh, this is a successor"? I'm like, "Okay, cool. I'm ready. Yeah. Let's go." And honestly. I'm in, I'm very much so enjoying it. Um, and all, damn near everything is voice acted. So awesome. fucking awesome. I love the style because it's just like Octopath Traveler, but it has like those super duper crazy, like high detailed spell effects to like cool. contrast the sprites. I like that. So far what I've gotten into with like, you know, the class <laughs> system and like learning your skills and things like that. And, you know, portioning this, like it, everything just flows. It goes well together. Um, And I recommend it if you don't mind um, a lot of exposition, because there are points where there's a lot of exposition, but also I'm eating it the fuck up because the world building is just like nonstop. They're just like, okay, so this war happened, but we like to tell you about this. We have to tell you why this country has this archives over here. I tell you about this country is the goddess actually exists. Who the fuck is the God? I tell you about this country, why this country only exists because it's fucking river. Like if it weren't for the fucking river, this bitch would be nobody like, I'm eating it the fuck up. Um, I haven't tried the Japanese voice actors, but I heard that it, they do a pretty good job with the Japanese voice acting. But the English mm-hmm. voice cast is doing a very good job so far from where I'm at in the story. And the normal mode, I haven't gotten like super duper deep, but like the normal mode is presenting like a challenge. I haven't had to like restart a, a level yet, but I always approach these kind of games with like the fire emblem mindset where I was like, can nobody can die. They have to get through mm-hmm. the whole fucking map, right. nobody can die. And niggas are dying. That's like, how I, I am. to sacrifice some niggas because I'm just like, I don't want to restart this level because I've been I've been struggling. Like, I've been fighting you niggas. And, like, sometimes I'm just like, that person dies, but it's not a Fire Emblem game where it, there's no permadeath. So, you know, if you want to give yourself that extra little challenge, then yeah. But I heard that, like, ladder maps in the game are literally just like, yeah, we weren't ready for this shit. I got fucking washed, like, just okay, like well, it sounds like my kind of thing because I've been playing yeah. Elden Ring, and that's exactly what Elden Ring's all about. Oh my god, into I've been seeing. Getting... I don't know how you niggas are playing <clears> that game. That game be before. running your pockets on a regular basis. You'd be, oh you open a door, god. some nigga comes out the side of your camera saw, and just one shot you. I saw a video. A guy literally was just like running through a building. He ran through the door, and as soon as he hit the door, yep. I was just like, I, yep. I no, no. No, the only thing that makes me want to see it is I saw that one picture. I think I said I tagged you in it where the one has the the guy has the samurai sword, but he has like the yeah. dagger, the magical yep. daggers. I was like, now nah, if I got that shit, I basically be like, we about to, we about to. If you, to it's funny because when you see people playing, uh, in what like there's a, there's playing Elden Ring and then there's playing Elden Ring. Playing Elden Ring is like, oh, I have my I have a sword. I have a shield. It's a scary castle. I'm going to walk my way in and see what happens. Oh, I died. Come back and try again. Playing Elder Ring is, okay, I got my Ashes of War with the fucking uh, 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 Dragon Ball Z dodge on it. I got two fucking Wakazashis. I know where all my, oh my, my invincibility God. frames are. I'm dodge rolling. I'm one one hand switching to a parry sword to block some nigga. Get the, get the oh. kill. <clears throat> There's this person that does um, monster. Well, not just like they they are very um, popular on Twitter for doing like crazy ass like monster hunter like mm-hmm. stuff and shit like that. And they did an Elden Ring clip where like it's that bridge monster. Fuck, I've, I've, there are probably a shit ton of monsters on the bridge, but it's like a boss monster. It's not one of yeah. those like huge giant things, but it's a boss monster. I think the monster has a katana itself, and they literally were doing like perfect parries. 
just Bro, like knocking that bitch down like there's an, a, there's an ability that you could get really early in elden ring that has you doing like goku instant transmissions and like you can like one one hit like like ei draw and do like critical damage and kill dudes and if you watch somebody who knows how to make all that shit work you they're like oh you're in a different game this is a completely yeah, different that, game that i think that's <laughs> one of the drawn points are like that's why it's so interesting to watch almost anybody play it because depending on their level, I'm like, oh my god, I, I think I can do that. I think I can do that. And then you watch somebody else and just like, oh, this is what nah, it's bro. Like. I'm a grinder. Really I just, like. I just get my levels up. I get my gear up. I just tank it out. If I fuck up, yeah. like I, just, I'm relying on all. You can my handle other it. Right, like that's my solution to the problem. Other motherfuckers be like, I don't need to wear a single bit of armor. I got, I okay. got is this the, motherfucking. Is, do game. you get bonuses for that? I've seen yeah, a lot. Really, of the armor people. fucking sucks in that game. You're usually you're always like like one tap unless you really are on some like shit with your build. Yeah. So that's what I'm just saying like when I see the people who go, I'm gonna I'm gonna play naked the whole game and they be just getting through content and I'm like, bro, that's another. Y'all over there doing something. But those are probably I don't know those people who like play those Souls games. Like, yes, that that's their genre. There was no so. such thing as blocking back in Bloodborne. It was all dodging. I never played those games. I was like, yeah, fuck that. I never. I, saw, I got Bloodborne I for free. Literally, I bought Elden Ring really. because I saw the trailer and some nigga had a giant shield. I'm like, great. I got something I can rely on to not get one. Well, shot. that's the thing, though. So yeah, <sighs> I've seen the person who was doing that like perfect pairing shit. They had like one of those like bucklers. Yeah, fuck that. No, I need something that covers my whole body. I can lose <laughs> every time you just... It was fucking crazy. Okay, I gotta find that clip now. Yeah, anyway. Like, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not, not recommending Elden Ring to people because A, it's already popular, and B, if you're not into those games, you will tear your, your fucking eyes out of your skull when you get killed by the first boss, and it's literally impossible. And you're like, well, there's $60. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, as far as, like, money-wise, Elden Ring is giving you a lot. Oh, where, where are my... What my continents this week? Oh my God. Um, uh, Elden Ring is giving you a lot for 60, but y'all, I'm um, beware of Lost Ark, okay? Beware of Lost Ark. Yes. I'm telling you, because one of my friends, he's heavy on it and he's already dumped a good like $450 in it to hit tier three. I just got the and little the little founders pack, the little like $20, $30 one. I'm yeah, like, I'll treat yeah. this like a regular game. Yeah. I've got to the end of the main content. And I'm like, okay, I see the MMO grind and I'm falling back a little bit. Exactly. And like they, they're releasing regular story content. So your levels are gonna have to get up there eventually. Mm -hmm. But right. Just beware that like, if you try to do like meta progression in that game, you're going to have to pay. Yes, you're going to have to true. pay. So that like, it's not pay to win because none of that stuff affects PVP, but it is pay to, to like be meta because mm -hmm. it there it's time gated for you to get the things that you need to get to the highest tier because those things are available in the shop. But mm -hmm. they're not available for you to get on a week. You can't grind it out on a weekly basis. You have a cap. So just be aware. It is a great game. It looks great. I'm enjoy I'm level 40. I'm enjoying whatever little story is going on right now. Um, and we talked about it like a lot, but we talked about it off podcast. We talked about it recording. But just be aware. Like when any <laughs> when any nigga told me that, that he has spent four hundred dollars and it's less than a month. Right. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Ooh. Those Koreans, Ooh. they know. And they're good they at they're listen, they're good at it. They're good at and I don't even know what kind of like gotcha log they have in Korea. So whatever. Right. But yeah, I, I mean a lot goes into this kind of stuff. Like they get psychologists for this. Just how like Facebook and Twitter, I think there was something behind like making the logos blue. And there's some yeah. kind of like return factor where it's just like you subconsciously are just I think they've like integrated like fear of missing out. Into mm -hmm. like the like how they engage users and shit like that. Like shit's sick. But at least with those, you really don't spend your money. You just, you know, <laughs> you just you spend your like emotional energy. This right. Meanwhile, really meanwhile, we talk about all the games that anime were addicted to. And it's like, oh, those motherfuckers are sick. And it's like, ah, they got me too. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. But that's yeah, really triangle cool. strategy, I love it. And it's on Switch, so that means you can take it places. So like I can go to the laundromat. It just basically be like, I don't have to sit here on my phone trying to figure shit out. I can literally just be like, bitch, I'm playing triangle strategy. Like, this is a great out excursion. Fuck yes. Right. So, all right. Um, 
that'll be all for this week. So if you have not already, make sure you follow us on Twitter, anime underscore savants. Um, and uh, the rest of our socials are anime savants. That's TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, YouTube, um, uh, and Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify. Please make sure that you guys give us a rating. I swear to God, it fucking helps us so much. Um, and also get ready for a shit ton of clips because like I've just been saving them up. So y'all about to get like a clip every day minimum hey. on like TikTok, Twitter, and Instagram. I'm just letting you know that it's coming. Okay. So that um oh fuck. Oh, also make sure that you go to like um Black Anime Podcast. They had like a panel on the Crunchyroll Fundimation merger. There were a lot of really cool people that were on the panel talking about like what happened this, this. I didn't even know it was a fucking panel. I just thought it was just a random Twitter space. And then they were like, oh yeah, this is the panel. And I was like, well, damn, nigga, you approved me to speak. I thought this was like a scheduled thing. So yeah, anyways, that's up on their um, Twitter, but Twitter, also yeah. on their like anchor, they put it as like a podcast episode this week. So if you're bored and you want to go listen to that, go listen to that. Um, Giant Shooty Robots, Ashbeard, Black Anime Podcast, it's a lot of good shit there. Um, and you can follow me at Corashore. Um, except for that weird lady that keeps tagging me in luxury item stuff on Instagram. You can, you stop Dude. making, stop that shit. That's so weird. I don't, well, they probably don't even listen to this, but I'll stop that. That's so I'm, I'm with you. Yeah. I mean, same thing. You can, you can follow me on Twitter at Neural Handshake. The thought bots are back. I've been getting a lot yes. of ads from these thought bots. Yes. What, what's thought going on? I'm not. Yeah, I'm not here to to hate on anyone's attempt to to drive traffic to their OnlyFans, but like there are too many thought bots on this thing. Where and a lot like, of the times, the the posts aren't even like part of like actual pages that exist. They're yes, just like exactly. we're just we're clearly trying to scam you. It's just, it's like, just well, a then... scam. Okay. Stop adding me. I don't want it. Get it out of here. Anyway, that's all I gotta say this week. Peace out, y'all. Bye.